first task is to create a shared folder that's going to act as a distribution point for our office setup files. So on the server I'm just going to create a folder, I'm going to call it office underscore 2010 and I'm going to share that folder off. So go to its properties, sharing, share. Now the rights that you want to grant are you need to allow read access for the authenticated users group. Check names. OK, and you'll see by default it grants read access. Click share. I'll give you the path to the share. It's UNC path. Just check security. Make sure authenticated users are in there with read. It is. Okay, just shuffle that across out of the way. I'm just going to open another Explorer window and navigate to my DVD drive. And I'm going to copy all the install files from the DVD to my share that I've just created. Put some in there. I'll speed this up a little bit. Okay, let's maximize that. Now in here, create another folder and call that folder log files. We'll address that a bit later on. You'll notice in here there is a folder called proplus.ww. Open that up. And in there you'll find there's an XML file called config.xml. If you open that up with Notepad, we're going to edit this file. At the very top line there, the one that says Display Level, we're going to alter the settings in that to the ones displayed on the screen. So, I'm going to change the Display Level from Full to None. The Completion Noticed value from Yes to No and suppress modal from no to yes and accept the Euler from no to yes while you're in here if you want you can also change uh, the username and company name if you so wish Okay, save that and close that down. Now what I'm going to do now is go back uh, and open up my folder once again and I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to right click because I'm going to run setup exe but because I hold down shift when I right click I can open a command window at that location and I'm going to run setup.exe with an admin switch, so setup.exe space forward slash admin. And what that will do is that will open the Microsoft Office customization tool. Accept all the defaults, okay. Let that spin up. Yep, keep the current settings, that's fine. Click OK. Now I'm going to go to licensing and user interface and I'm going to add, add in my multiple activation key my unlock code for office I'm just going to paste this in rather than type it in and I've blurred it out because it is a valid Mac key. Now remember take the spaces out, no dashes as illustrated on the screen once that's done, tick the box to say that you're going to accept the EULA and set the display level to none. Okay, we need to decide what we're going to install. So set features and installation states and I'm going to turn on and off the applications that I want. I want access, I want Excel, I don't want SharePoint Workspace, I know that won't be installed. I don't want OneNote, I do want Outlook, I want PowerPoint, I don't want Publisher. That's fine, that's fine. I don't particularly want Visual Viewer. 
and I don't want in four parts so I'll turn that off as well now because I want to automatically activate when I've finished rather than have it pop up in my user's face to say it requires activating and I've got so many days to activate it if you go to modify setup properties and add in a new value in the name section set it to auto underscore activate and set its value to the number one and click OK that's that done now I'm going to save the MSP file that it's going to create now it needs to go in your shared folder so in our case it's Office 2010 and it needs to go in the updates directory so save it in there, it doesn't matter what you call it as long as it's something sensible save that MSP file in the updates folder Let's just exit the customization tool finish with that so if I open up updates you'll see there's my MSP file there and you can put any other office updates that you want to be applied in this folder as well right close that down now I'm going to create a batch file that I'm going to use as a script to install office you can get a copy of the code that you want from the website there are four things that you're going to need to change the product name and the server name because obviously your server will have a different name to the one I'm deploying from so you'll need to change the server name in three places and the product name if you're installing a different product okay save that and I'm going to rename that to deploy underscore office underscore 2010 change its extension from txt to bat because it is a batch file and I'm going to copy that to the clipboard you'll see why in a minute now if I launch administrative tools and create a new group policy that I'm going to deploy office from all my computers are in an OU called Business Computers. So I'm going to create a new GPO and link it there. I'm going to call it Deploy Office 2010. Let's edit it. And what this is going to do is it's going to launch the script that we've just written. Let's just make things a little easier to see. Expand Windows settings. Select scripts, start up and shut down. Add, browse, and now I'm going to paste in. That's why I copied the batch file to the clipboard earlier. I'm just going to paste that straight in there rather than have to run around to try and find the path to the right folder. OK, that. Now I have found that user account control can trip me up and stop the install from going ahead. So I am also going to disable user account control uh, behavior, that's the one. And I'm going to set that to elevate without prompting. Apply. Okay, there are obvious security implications to doing this, so detect application installs, define and disable, apply. Okay. And run all administrators in admin approval mode. Disabled apply. Okay. Close that down. And I'm gonna minimize 
minimize that out the way. Now, if you deploy as is, this is what you're going to see. And you probably don't want this presented to your users. To disable that in group policy, you need to import an administrative template to suppress it asking your users what settings they want. You need to download the ADM, there's a 32 and a 64 bit variant, download the one applicable to the version of Office you're installing. Speed that up a bit. Now I'm going to extract. Okay, continue. I'm going to extract these to a folder on my desktop. Just call it ADM. Click OK. Move all this out of the way. So if you open that up, you'll see ADM, uh, English US. There are various ADM templates. The one we're going to want is the Office 14 one. Now, unfortunately, this is a user policy. What we created earlier was a computer policy. So I'm just going to create a policy on the root of my domain and link it to my domain that I am going to apply this policy to. And if I edit that policy, so user configuration policies, administrative templates, and I'm going to import the ADM that I just downloaded. It's on the desktop, remember? ADM English US. And it's Office 14. Open that up. Close that. What you'll see now, if we just jiggle stuff about, is if you expand administrative templates, we've now got classic administrative templates, ADM, expand that out, and we have a settings for Microsoft Office 2010. Scroll all the way down at the bottom, miscellaneous, and over on the right hand side, we're just, I'm just going to sort this alphabetically, the one that we want is suppress recommended settings dialog, so it's not going to ask our users. Enable that, apply, OK. Close that down. OK, that is all we should need to do. Server side. Let's just tidy up, delete them now, finish with those. And jump across onto a client machine. OK, remember it's a startup script, so it'll run as the computer starts, as opposed to a login script. Now, you're obviously not going to see a great deal on the screen when you first log in, so let's make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. If I open a Microsoft Management Console, and I add uh, a snap-in for the result and set a policy, let's see what's going on in the background. If I expand that out, click Action and generate RSLP, accept all the defaults, yes, login mode, this computer, my user account, go. Finish. Now this will show us what's being applied policy-wise. So remember under Windows Sense Scripts, Start Up, there it is, so we know that it's been applied and you'll see if you check the time it is it has been run also what we can do is we can see if our administrative templates also been applied scroll down there you can see that that has also been applied so we know that the policies that we created have been applied both to the machine to launch the script and to our user to suppress those details now if you look at the clock you'll see the time jump in a minute. It took about six minutes to install, but you'll see I now have Microsoft Office installed. It is pre-activated and other than asking me my um, initials and logon name when it starts, that's it deployed and pre-activated. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.
www.peaknetlive.com. Thanks very much.